Welcome back, everyone. A Sims middle school student exploited online from her own bedroom. Now, years later, she's sharing her story to show how human trafficking is changing. She spoke with WKRG News 5's Nicolette Schleisman to protect others from having to go through the same trauma and shares with us what you need to know to protect your children. It started when she was just a sixth grader. I didn't believe myself to be a victim of human trafficking specifically. I, um, I was like, no, because it was over the internet. He never touched me physically. That's not the case. Bree Viger chosen to represent her middle school classroom and connect with fellow students on social media. I was just going down the line, hitting the accept button. I feel like that's what all middle schoolers do. Um, and not paying attention, I accidentally hit the accept button for someone that I didn't know but would later find out that it was an online predator. She began interacting with someone she thought was a fellow student. As the conversation continued, they were gathering information about me. She finally realized she didn't know the person too late. I posted my whole life on social media. I, you know, posted a picture where it was, I'm attending dance class today after school of here's a picture of me and my sister and Later on, they would use that against me. That predator, a man in California, demanding Bree give him an explicit photo of herself. I didn't know what to do in that circumstance. And, you know, they, they started threatening me. If you don't do this, I'm going to kill your sister. I know where you live. You live in Sims, Alabama. I know who your mom is. I know where she works. Your dad, they were name dropping everything. So she complied. Then it got worse fast whole lot worse. Every single night I had to get on a video call with him and basically perform at a certain period of time every single night. And it was because he was he was live streaming and he was making money. And if I wasn't on at that time then I mean that he's losing money off of that. So he would then start to get very angry. He was very tech savvy. He hacked into all of my accounts and so if I would try to go against him and say, no, I don't want to, then it was, oh, well, I'm going to post this explicit photo of you on your Instagram. What are your friends and family going to think of you then? The abuse continued for three years before Bree's parents discovered what was happening. Someone is manipulating my daughter 70 feet from where I sleep, and I didn't know. Late one night, Bree's mom, Cricket, came into her room, saw her child in a full face of makeup, and knew something wasn't quite right. And Bree admitted what was happening to her. Horrifying and a lot to take in. Um, the mind just begins to race on you. It's like, how does this happen? Why did this happen? How did they find her? How did we get to this point? And the hardest thing as, as a parent is, how did I not know? How did I not know? Bree's not the only victim. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's tip line received 21.7 million reports of suspected child sexual exploitation in 2020, the most ever in a single year. And it's happening right here in Mobile County. The Mobile County District Attorney's Office says the Rose Center, Mobile's facility for victims and survivors of human trafficking, is helping dozens of clients right now. 80% of middle schoolers, by the time they reach eighth grade, have sent a naked photo of themselves on their phone. So if one thing can come out of this conversation you and I are having, is parents need to understand that their kids are doing these, they are, they are doing things that you don't know they're doing on their phones. That's why Cricket urges parents to know what their kids are doing online. Go through their list. How do you know this person? Why are they on your social media? And if the child can't instantly answer how they know that person and have a true, genuine human connection relationship, then they should not be allowed on social media with them. We post everything there. The truth is, my reality... It took a while for Bree to open up about the online abuse. It is no lie that I'm a stranger to the dark due to the fact that I'm a survivor of an online child predator. The first time she shared her story was on stage as a contestant in the Distinguished Young Women's Scholarship Program. I just remember the audience being silent. 
and in the audience they had been people that I'd grown up with, you know, people who knew my parents. It wasn't just strangers in the audience, um, and nobody knew what I went through. She now works closely with the Mobile County District Attorney's Office telling her story to raise awareness about online predators. Still, seven years after the online abuse first began, it's still a constant worry for Bree and her family. That's wanting to get his hands on her. You know, and it's, um, he had her sold. He just needed to physically put his hands on her. They hope Bree's story helps protect others from the horrors she went through. Don't worry about how many likes or followers you have because that's ultimately how I ended up in this situation. Bree is currently studying criminal justice at Coastal Alabama. She says one day she would love to be a district attorney. In the studio with photojournalist Arnell Hamilton, Nicolette Schleisman, WKRG News 5.